He is the only uh, member of the Slager jury that was black, and he's going to give us, I guess, his insights as to what went down. So we're going to get it directly from the horse's mouth. Cheer for some insight on what went on inside that jury room. I'm joined now by Dorsey Montgomery. He was uh, the jury foreman there. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, as you know, yes, sir. Uh, for a lot of folks, the evidence appeared to be overwhelming. That video of Slager uh, shooting a guy running away in the back several times. Take us inside that jury room. How was it not as open and shut as it seemed? Uh, like I've been stating from the time I started uh, this, uh, you have to realize that you have 12 different uh, individuals coming together in a confined room from 12 different backgrounds with 12 different opinions trying to come up with one verdict. And that was uh, one of the main issues because the way I may have seen it, uh, other in individuals may have seen it in that same aspect. So that was one of the uh, major issues that we had in the deliberation room. How did you see it? How did some of the other jurors see it? Uh, at the, when I first got uh, inside the uh, courtroom, you know, I came in with a very open mind, you know, so oftentimes I think due to my uh, uh, my color and uh, I was going to go and do X, Y, and Z, and that, that's not what I was going in there to do. I went in there and I went and I looked at all the evidence that was presented to me from the defense and from the, uh, the uh, prosecutor and then uh, when we got inside, I made a judgment based on a fact actual information, not my opinion, not my emotions, not anything that I could inject into it, but mm -hmm. everything that I made my decision on was on factual information. Some people didn't do the same. Was your judgment manslaughter? My judgment was manslaughter, yes. And I, I think for the purposes of this conversation, at least, we should point out that you were um, the only black juror. I was. Who also just so happened to be the jury foreman. I was. Um, how much of a role do you think race may have played inside the jury room? I don't believe it played a role inside the jury Not at all. Not that I could have seen. Now, what's going on inside individuals head? I don't know. But when I was there, we were uh, we had good camaraderie. Of course, we had, I would call it intense fellowship, if you would, uh, when things got a little heavy. But uh, from the, uh, the majority of the time, it wasn't any racial uh, tension or anything of that nature. Of course, it came up. We discussed it, but of course it wasn't, uh, in my opinion, one of the uh, major uh, decision factors. What was the chief argument being made against manslaughter and against murder as well? A self-defense. Your, your fellow jurors thought that he, they thought that he was operating in self-defense. Did they think that based on what they saw in the video or did they think that based on something that happened before the video that we've all seen there? I think they based it on the information that was presented to us by our, uh, the, uh, the attorney, not the attorney, by the judge. When the judge gave us our jury clause and everything that we had in there was self-defense, manslaughter, murder, uh, the indictments, that, all the stuff that he presented yeah. to us, I think they, they took that. Not None of us have a law degree. None of us have a background in, in, in criminal justice. So we had to base it on what we perceived. So I think when they saw that it was self-defense, they began to break it down and we began to go inside it and we begin to dissect it. And then we come to find out that, you know, it, the, the clause said it has to meet all three and he didn't meet all three because there was another way out, in my opinion. One, one juror wrote this letter to the judge. Yes. Uh, and it, it reads in part, quote, I still cannot, mm -hmm. without a reasonable doubt, convict the defendant. I cannot, with good conscience, consider a guilty verdict. I cannot and will not change my mind. Right. It had been widely reported that there was this, this one lone holdout. You say that's not the case. It that wasn't just this one person. No, that's not the case. On Friday, when we were uh, deliberating, he came and said that he's not changing his mind. And that was fine. But we had five other individuals, really six other individuals, who had not made up their mind yet. They were still undecided. They didn't know which way to go. And so as the foreman, it was my duty and my obligation to make sure that those six individuals had the time they needed to do their civil duty and make a conscious decision 
decision based on this particular case. So that's why uh, I want to just go and dispel that myth. Yeah. That myth is not true. The media took that, and the media did what the media did. Uh, prosecutors say they're going to try him again. What do you think happened second time around? I, I, I can't be the judge of that. You know, I know we did the first round, uh, first time, and hopefully, you know, uh, we've been taught, and uh, I think Mr. Uh, 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 Andy Savage said it best, justice has to be even. Justice can never tilt one way or tilt the other way. It has to be even. So I believe at some point in time, uh, a justice will stand up. Andy Savage, of course, the attorney representing Michael Slager. Absolutely. Uh, Dorsey, thank you. Thank, no, thank you for you. your time. Thank, thank you for your you. insight as well. Okay, folks. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, I think there's some, some sugar in some tanks somewhere. Um, and as far as what's being reported uh, now, um, that makes me feel uh, worse about what happened in the Slager trial. If, if what this guy is saying is correct, then that report and the report of the 11 to 1 to convict is incorrect. Yeah, you know, I, I, I got some real issues here because self-defense, you know, self-defense in this particular case is bullshit. Just straight out is bullshit, okay? Um, and if they are allowed uh, to try to hang their hats on a uh, bullshit claim of self-defense, then there's no chance for justice in America. You know, that's just it in a nutshell. And that's just my opinion.